Well, I think we're just really saying, using different words to explain the same thing, except that you're wrong. <laughs> so my position is that Dupuytren contracture is a passive process more than an active contractile process. Uh, the definition of active is that an active contraction takes a finger which is straight and pulls it into a bent position, and then a bent finger and pulls it into a more bent position in exactly the same way that, that um, wound contracture takes an open wound and pulls it shut. Whereas passive contraction is uh, the process by which bent fingers, the tissues are remodeled so that the fingers stay that way. There are three clinical observations which clearly support the passive contraction model. First is that Dupuytren contractures are location specific. Now people develop Dupuytren nodules in three locations, in the palm, in the back of the fingers, and in the plantar fascia for letter hose. Uh, in those three places, the histology is the same, the myofibroblasts are the same, the biology is the same, but only one of those areas regularly develops contracture, and that is the palm. And the mechanical difference between those three sites is that the palm is the only area where the tissues rest in relative laxity on the back of the finger and the plantar fascia because the toes rest in MTP hyperextension, the tissues rest at relative tension. So. Dupuytren contracture only develops in areas that have sustained tissue laxity. Second clinical observation is that the timing is wrong. Myofibroblast wound contracture runs along at a pretty good clip, about a centimeter a month. At that rate, you should go from a nodule to finger in the palm in less than a year and just do the math. But that is very rare. That means that the cellular mechanics of Dupuytren contracture have to have some fundamental difference from the cellular mechanics of run-of-the-mill active wound contracture. Third clinical observation is that the end point is wrong. So active contraction should take a straight finger and pull it bent, take a bent finger, pull it more, and pull it more, 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 and ultimately the fingertips would dig into the palm. You do see people with Dupuytren disease that contractures have brought the fingertips into the palm, but they only dig into the palm if something additional is going on, either spasticity, often undiagnosed, or uh, scar tissue from previous injury or surgery, or people that have a tube on a four often have cortical uh, reorganization that allows them to actively flex their fingers to get them out of the way so they act as a functional amputation while they're still straightening their other fingers. So if they come in like this, even with a boutonniere from the fingers crushed in, you get them to relax and you can lift their fingertips off of their palm. So the contracture follows the posture not vice versa. How could this be? Well, I'm a surgeon, so it's got to be very simple. Here's a myofibroblast, which has these cell matrix adhesions, focal adhesions, as, as uh, has been described, that connect extracellular collagen strands to intracellular contractile stress fibrils, and there are enzymes floating around in the matrix. Now, there are two types of myofibroblast contracture. There's periodic and isometric. This is critical to my argument. Periodic contractures are short, brief, weak, they just can pull the collagen strands a little bit if the collagen has slack in it. They are not strong enough to actively deform the matrix, and they're regulated by uh, calcium biology. These are different than the isometric contractions, which are a thousand times stronger. They're actually able to deform the matrix and hold it there, and they have a different biochemical pathway, the rho kinase pathway. Now, this is the first step in wound contraction. What happens in wound contraction is that when these cells, uh, when these stress fibers contract, it creates slack around the cells. And then the periodic contractions kick in because they're always going every 100 seconds, and they create these loops. Extracellular cross-linking enzymes come in, trim the slack, they join the ends together, and ready to go again. That's how active contracture ratchets an open wound closed. Passive contraction model is different. Passive contraction model, the first step is matrix laxity. So the hand rests in laxity and you have these extracellular collagen strands that become lax and at times when they're lax, the passive, uh, the periodic contraction kicks in because it's always going on, trims out the slack with the extracellular cross-linking enzymes and re-equilibrates and bobs your uncle. In summary, Dupuytren disease myofibroblasts are unique in that they, they primarily reduce collagen slack. If the resting posture produces collagen slack, as it does in the palm, then 
uh, the deformity follows the resting posture. This is consistent with the vast majority of Dupuytren contracture patterns. You don't get Dupuytren contracture where the fingers pulled off to the side because of, of uh, myofibroblasts going wild. It's consistent with the known biology of periodic contraction, and that's my case. <laughs>